The girl with barbed wire hair. The man rips back a fistful of her hair, and it flares into barbs. Like that, his fist shreds, and she dashes. But his screams ring the alley with no Doppler downshift. She flees at the speed of normal panic while his left hand cradles his wrecked right. Last fist it'll ever make to raise for breakaways or saviors to clutch a fork or forge a check, offer a balloon to a child, or teach its mother a lesson. Now, these things shouldn't happen, but here she is the next week leaning into her school locker, barbed hair snagged in the fence. It occurs to kids who pass that they could help, but they're terrified to touch her. She too wonders about contagion, never trusts the blood she shampoos each morning from her scalp. She learns to sleep light, balanced gently on the pillow on her neck, grows oddly muscled from this posture as its skin thickens, coarsens. She wonders why barbed wire? Why didn't her hair turn to asps or plays? But in the asking she knows, pictures a huge pink bunny on whose lap her mom once sat her at the mall the hard clod digging into her leg. And peering back into its plastic face, she found two eyes burning between the smiling lips and thought of the lust of rabbits, the greed of rabbits which ravish gardens in tails against whom farmers raise sharp fences. But the man in the alley wore no mask. Bitch, he spat as he grabbed for the head. She dared to turn away. And bitch, again, as he crouched over the flesh she wrecked, as if she could command all the iron in her blood to rush to her split ends and steal into thorns. Though the resulting anemia would explain a lot, a blanched complexion people come to read as goth, and the midday faintness which bids her bend her head against the locker from which finally she comes unpinned. Now inside she finds a comic left for her, X-Men number 171, with a startled heroine circled on the cover. And flipping through, she finds this woman is deaf to touch, drains soul and force at the slightest brush of skin, a power the hero cannot alter and did not choose, and the girl understands. She has no magic. She'll never sprout new limbs or blade her tongue. The agency was his. His. Where did he get it, this power? Who else has felt it? But though her eyes dart for signs, the man is nowhere. He's everywhere. He takes practice not to flinch from a handshake. That's her story. And though wishing is impotent, I'd never wish it on anyone. But I'd wish it for my friend's sister, grabbed at age 11. And I'd wish it for my niece, who had no sudden spines or quills to ward away her stepfather's fingers. I wish it for her voice to flash forth and bind him in wire that would dredge her marrow to speak.